Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the different sieves in Age of Empires 4 and trying to put them on a tier list in terms of my opinion uh, for team games. So for 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, so not, not even counting 1v1 at all. I know a lot of people out there play team games, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, trying to rank these, uh, these civilizations in just team games. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at this, but a few things right away. This is just my opinion. You're welcome to disagree. It doesn't. This is not science. This is an opinion. It does not mean that I am perfectly right in everything I say, uh, and I would love to hear if you disagree uh, down below. And then also, uh, even civilizations that I rank a little bit lower can still perform well. Uh, basically, every civilization in the game has situations where if they are played well, they can carry a game and they can do uh, do a lot of really good things. So just because I rank a civilization low does not mean you shouldn't play them if you don't like them uh, or, or they can never do anything good in a team game. So as I dive into explaining the tiers, I don't know why. Let me go ahead and make, make myself a little bit smaller here. Um, I don't know why A is up there. Let's do that. Okay, there. Now we got S, A, B, C, and then F right here. Now, uh, a little side note, I'm actually not going to be putting anybody in the F tier. I don't think there's a civilization currently that's just unplayable in team games. That just complete trash and you should never pick them. And if you do, your team is just screwed. I don't think there's anything uh, that I would put in the F tier. So it's all right that I block that because, uh, spoiler alert, I'm not going to be putting anybody in the F tier. So let's go ahead and we'll work our way up. I'm going to start in the C tier and I'm going to put Abbasid. Now, um, Abbasid... Uh, again, like I said, can be good. They've got a really good upgrade that allows them to get villagers uh, cheaper so that their 2TC, 3TC booms are pretty crazy, which are pretty common in team games. Um, but I don't think camel archers, which are kind of their specialty or, or, or a cool part of their sieve, I don't think their camel archers are worth what they cost. Typically, it's hard to get a return on that investment. Uh, they're, like, they're nothing compared to the Roos horse archers, you know, in a situation like that. So, um, like, when a, when a game is loading, and the other team has an Abbasid player, I'm not fearing that. I'm not like, oh no, they've got an Abbasid. We got to watch out. Like, uh, you know, compared to some of the other civs in the game. Uh, but I do have a, a friend that plays Abbasid and plays them very well. And, and we do uh, really good in team games with him on Abbasid. So it's not to say that they're a complete trash can. It's just when you're doing a tier, uh, a tier list like this, you've got to split hairs and you've got to put somebody at the bottom and you got to put somebody at the top. So that's what I'm going to do. They can still perform well, but I'm going to put them in the C tier because I think other sieves can just bring things more consistently to the table. Next up, I am going to go at the top of the C tier and I'm actually going to go with Delhi. Now, Delhi is a, is a tough one to rank because they are awesome on maps that have rivers, uh, especially like if you're sharing river with your opponent early in the game, Delhi is amazing because you can use their fishing boats to your advantage and go raid and attack things and harass their dock and do lots of really cool things. It's very good to have a Delhi on a map uh, with any sort of shared river. But the problem is in team games, a lot of people hate playing on water. So a lot of people dodge those maps. So you may not get to play those situations very often. Uh, they also have elephants, which are very good. Uh, very good castle age unit. They, they fall off a little bit in the end game when you're facing a bunch of bombards and crazy siege and stuff like that. Uh, and, and team games, the maps are so huge that in a late game 4v4, it can be a, a little bit harder to get value out of the elephants. But they are a very good castle age unit. And towards the lower ELOs, uh, or ELO I think uh, is how you properly say it, but towards the lower ranks anyway, elephants are actually a lot stronger uh, than they are up at the up at the higher tiers uh, where speed and mobility is definitely king. At the lower tiers, where you can kind of mass up a death ball and push, uh, elephants are a very good unit. So Delhi is tough to place. They're either like high A or low C, uh, but because those situations are a little bit less common, I am going to put them in the top of the C tier. Then we're going to be moving into the B tier, and I am going to go with English. Now, another another tough. It, 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 there's so many different situations. It's it's obviously tough to do this, but the English are incredible um, in, in terms of early game map control, uh, pushing forward, pressuring opponents. If you get a setup where you've got like cavalry and then somebody on English massing longbows and you're uh, harassing somebody, picking off vills, it's really hard to engage an early game army like in the first 10 or 15 minutes that's that has these longbows as part of their composition so definitely strong and i, I don't want to put them in the c or the f tier uh because english are very good in the first 
15 minutes of the game. But unfortunately, they start to fall off a little bit after that. Uh, if you're not able to do damage early game with their longbows, uh, they, they, they do have some really cool bonuses like uh, like the farms that generate gold is an amazing, uh, just infinite gold farm that you can have late game. But uh, I, I just think other sieves have got more to offer after that early game mark. So if you don't get damage done early with the English, you're going to kind of slip behind and that's why they go in the B tier. Next up, we're going to go with HRE. They are kind of aging like fine wine. Uh, people are finding more and more ways to get value out of HRE. Uh, they just got awesome landmarks. They're all, all of their landmarks, are, or at least the ones that get picked most often, are just incredible. They've got the Octon Chapel that is going to just boom their economy. Then they've got the Regnitz Cathedral, where they can basically get 1,000 gold a minute from relics. You get three relics in there, 900 gold a minute. It's just an insane boom to the infinite gold generation of your economy. And then if they're behind in Vils, because they had to play a little bit more defensive, they get a Palace of Swabia, which is basically four town centers, and they can just crank out Vils and boom harder than any civilization in that early Imperial. So uh, they, just the, the booming capability, uh, because team games tend to be, in most cases, a little bit more passive, uh, the maps are so huge, and both teams just kind of want to wall off and sit back and boom, HRE are amazing at that. They're kind of the opposite of the English. So they're both in the same tier, English, god tier early game, and then fall off. Whereas HRE are pretty bad early game, but they really ramp up. So uh, both these civilizations kind of getting both ends of the B tier there. Uh, but HRE can definitely be very oppressive if you just let them sit back and build and grab relics and boom with their palace of Swabia. You definitely want to be careful and, and, and try to harass them and do a little bit of damage because HRE can snowball out of control and really crank up after that 15 minute uh, mark in the game or so. Then for the first civilization that we are going to put in the A tier, I am going to go with French. Now, uh, the, the French here, um, the, the, uh, cavalry is incredible in team games. With the maps being large, you want mobility. Uh, a really standard composition is going to be cav and archer and, and you got like if you got like french and then english and you have the the french mass cavalry and the english mass longbows you can really put on a lot of pressure in a 2v2 scenario or a 3v3 where those two go attack somebody uh facing knights uh from the french and the longbows from the english can be very oppressive and tough to deal with so it's great for map control and the french have some of the best cavalry in the game uh they're just they're just very consistent i think i think the french are probably Probably the best designed sieve in terms of balance currently. They've got some cool things like faster vill production, really cool knights that self heal. Then they've got a, a guild hall that's got infinite generation of whatever resource you want. They've got uh, cool landmark decisions like uh, on a boomy map or a water map, you can go for the uh, the, the, the trade landmark uh, or the chamber of commerce, I think it's called. Or you can go for the uh, the stable landmark that's going to let you uh, get better stable the whole game and, and, and faster production. So uh, the French, they're just very consistent performers. Basically any map, any situation, they're good on water, they're good on land, they're good early game. They hold up late game with cannons that do more damage and, and cannons are already insane in this game. So uh, yeah, the French, just a very solid pick and you can never really go wrong having a French on your, uh, on your side of things in a team game because like I said, cavalry is super amazing. You're going to see a lot of cavalry and siege and then early game Game, you'll see a lot of the English longbows as well. So French, solidly in the A tier. And now we're actually going to have the last three sieves all be in the same tier. And I am going to start with the Mongols. Now in 1v1, the Mongols are just clearing away the best. Like, like if you're good with, e if you play each Civ at an equal level, you'll probably win the most consistently with Mongols. They've got the best cheese capabilities. So any situation where you've got to run and, and tower down an opponent or, or do some crazy shenanigans rushing somebody, uh, but with their Uvu and the Feudal Age being able to double produce units, just absolute insanity. And then also in team games, they can arguably have the best late game economy with their silver tree boom. They get a bunch of traders on those big maps with long trade routes in the back. Uh, and then they get their yam network increasing the speed of everything. And their economy is just bonkers with their mobility. They can't wall, which is a huge drawback. But the nice thing about team games is it doesn't hurt you as much as it does in 1v1 because, oh, well, 
Mongols can't wall. They've got two or three teammates that can do it for them. So it's not that big of a deal. So one of their biggest hindrances, uh, the fact they can't build walls, is kind of negated because you're in a team with teammates that can wall for you. So you get all the benefits and the negatives of the civilization are lessened a little bit. So Mongols definitely belong in the S tier. They are amazing in 1v1. They're amazing in every team game. And you can never really go wrong having a Mongols on your side of the map. Then next up, I am going to go with Chinese. Now, they are just, uh, they, they've got the best Siege in the game. Siege is so good. It's even better in team games when you've got these big clumped up fights, these fights in the middle of the map, like Mountain Pass. Uh, and uh, so with Siege being so strong and the Chinese having the best Siege because of the Clock Tower, Obviously, the Chinese are going to be very strong. Also, their 2TC boom is crazy economically. Uh, they've got special archers that are really good. Zhuganu. Uh, just so many cool things with the Chinese, the Imperial officers. Uh, so having a Chinese on your team uh, when you're playing defensively and going super uh, eco-heavy, they're going to be so strong late game. They're going to scale so hard. Uh, and you're really going to want their Bombards, their Nesta Bees, their, their Springolds, and everything they have to offer. Palace guards are fast which helps a lot on the bigger maps so obviously chinese belongs in the s tier and then last up you cannot see them behind my camera here but you already know uh, i'm actually going to go with the Rus as number one it's not letting me place it there there we go i'm going to go with Rus as number one now why you're you're, you're saying Chinese and Mongols are so ridiculously strong what would make Rus number one the Mongols have such a broken win percentage in 1v1 but this is not 1v1. And the Rus are structured around being balanced with hunts and wolves and boars and these different huntable animals that are on the map. Well, guess what? In 3v3 and 4v4, there's a lot more of those. There's way more wolves. There's way more hunts. It, 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 an insane amount of opportunity for Rus to get up to 500 bounty super easily. I've seen people get up to 500 bounty six minutes into the game. And you're getting an insane eco bonus by doing that. They don't even need to farm gold. So they're getting their bounty is easier. Getting to fast castle to, to get to the point where they're massing those horse archers is easier. Horse archers right now are way over tuned. We can argue if they're bugged or, but whatever. They're not attacking at the uh, rate that the tooltip in game says. So they're either bugged to be performing too good, which I think is probably the case. Or they're just, uh, the, the tooltip in game is written wrong. But I think right now they are just bugged to be better than they should be. Uh, the horse archer spam with some with some of the amazing uh, long range springles behind it to make sure you get siege superiority. Then transitioning into the bombards. They have cool upgrades for them with an awesome bounty economy, uh, with awesome landmarks. Like just so many cool things about the roost. They're awesome on water. The fishing boats don't even need to go back to the dock. So there's just no situation in a team game where you're not going to want a ruse that has tight build orders, can get to that fast castle, can start spamming horse archers, can go around raiding the trade routes, raiding different opponents, and in a straight up fight with a ball of horse archers and a little bit of siege, they're insanely difficult to deal with. So uh, just with everything being easier for them and them being balanced around the amount of huntables that are available in 1v1, obviously in a 3v3 or 4v4, with more of all of that, all of their stuff becomes easier and they are just insane. You're basically on a ticking clock uh, when the enemy has a ruse and you don't because when they get that 500 bounty and they're spanking out those horse archers with the imperial upgrades the longer range all of that's going to start raining down on you and they can pump them out so cheap so fast that it's just going to be hard to to run them down and like i said with mongols one of their biggest disadvantages as a sieve is that they can't build stone walls but guess what your teammates can build stone walls for you so one of the biggest downfalls of the ruse doesn't matter because your teammates can build the stone walls and the roost can just sit back and run around and use their APM to harass everybody, snipe siege units, uh, snipe trade routes, and do all the crazy things they want to do with their ball of horse archers. And now that I think about running around and doing crazy things, how silly of me to uh, to have China and not talk about Fire Lancers. I, I, let me rewind a little bit and talk about Fire Lancers because you're probably thinking, how does this guy not mention Fire Lancers as part of the Chinese? So my bad on that. But yes, Fire Lancers are ridiculous right now. And it's a big reason why 
Chinese have to be in the S tier, regardless of everything else I said about them in a good way. So right now, the Fire Lancers, they're, they're doing splash damage when they collide with things. They're trading efficiently with basically any unit in the game, and they can knock out somebody in literally five seconds. They just run around, landmark, 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 done, see ya. And so, like, it's so scary when you get to, like, that 15, 20-minute mark in the game, the whole team has to start sweating, like, oh my gosh, where's the Chinese player? Have we seen their units? Do they have fire answers yet? And everybody's got to kind of freak out like you're on a clock of getting eliminated any second. So you've got to have stone walls. Uh, a popular thing you can do uh, at the higher levels is take one of your landmarks and just embed it with stone walls. So like maybe they'll kill two of your landmarks, but they can't get your last one uh, because they will eliminate you in literally five to 10 seconds. Just click, 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 done. You're out. See ya. So you've got to be really careful. You've got to be in a spot where you can wall off a landmark or be in a spot where you can get stone walls, get multiple layers of stone walls to be able to deal with the Fire Lancers until hopefully they are balanced a little bit to not be able to eliminate players in five seconds from the game. Uh, because right now I think they should be strong because it's tough to get to them. But right now with how fast they can kill buildings and mass, it's a little bit too oppressive in a 3v3 or 4v4 setting. So that is going to do it for this iteration of a team list tier list here for Age of Empires 4. And when we look back at this, um, really for how new the game is, they've done a pretty good job so far in terms of balancing. I just wish we would get more feedback from them and maybe uh, get little tweaks to the game a little bit more often. It's hard to say because it's so new. They haven't really gotten into their flow yet. And also we had the holiday season kind of right after their first big uh, balance changes. So it's hard to see what their rotation will be in terms of balancing, but I really hope we would get a little bit more from them on a, on a more frequent basis. So keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully that is coming because the game could definitely use a few things like addressing fire lancers, addressing how strong siege is, especially bombards and cannons, and maybe addressing water uh, because demolition ships are a little bit insane right now. Uh, and just the way that water works in the game, especially team games, can be a really wonky. Uh, so there's definitely things to address in terms of balance. But right now, this is how I would kind of rank it, in my opinion, for team games. So if you have any input down below, would love to hear it. And also, uh, this is a new channel for me. So uh, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe on your way out because I'm hoping to... Uh, to bring you lots of content like this for Age of Empires, just having uh, different discussions about how the community feels about civilizations, tier lists, guides, whatever. We might do some casting. We'll see how things go. But yeah, anyway, would love to have your input down below as well. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.